welcome to another episode of the Fan Zone Podcast. Your home for all things Bolton Wanderers, up the trotters, the Northwest's number one podcast. Hello and welcome back to another Fan Zone Podcast video. Hopefully you've seen our last video. Uh, it's mine and Ben uh, Timberlake's top five Bolton Wonders moments. If you haven't, go and check them out. If you have, yeah, here's part two of the little mini series we're doing. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Cole, what's your fifth best Bolton moment? Oof. I think uh, for those who, uh, who obviously won't be aware, um, I've had to uh, take too much of, of Ben's time up tonight trying to delve into the archives of my memory of, of, of Bolton Wanderers past. What I've decided to do is do it from my first season ticket, which was uh, 95, 96, 97, that type of era. Um, so, yeah, I would say I'm going to probably start in 2001, which was a game against Liverpool um, when we beat them shortly after being promoted to the then Barclay card premiership. I think the correct... Uh, terminology is or was um two one would beat on that night uh michael ricketts and dean holsworth scoring a very late winner um for those who recall uh that was a game when holsworth shot from around 20 yards out i think it would have been um bobbled shot proper tired right foot swinger uh, and went underneath sander vesterveld and we won the game two one now, that might be a bit of an obscure one for a lot of people. Bear in mind, I was only a, a young lad at the time. Probably what would have been like 12, 13, something like that, I think. Yeah, about a year about. before I was born, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ben. Um, but at the time, I, I, I thought to myself, we've, we've got a chance here. This Premier League or Premiership isn't all it's, uh, it's cracked up to be. Uh, obviously, we beat a team in Liverpool that had a lot of uh, good players, I think. That year, or certainly it may even be even the year before, you know, for those watching who've probably got a better memory than me, I'm not sure, but they won the Euro UEFA Cup at the time. I think they did some kind of BTEC treble um, around that era. Um, and yeah, we, we, we beat them 2 1. So I remember thinking to myself, you know, we can beat a team like Liverpool with Gerrards and a young Gerrard as well. Uh, who, who would have contributed to that England game? I think that, that around that time when we beat Germany five five one in, in in Munich, so he was a, a, a Steven Gerrard who was just coming into his uh, his early uh, pomp. Um, Emil Heskey scored for Liverpool that night. Then obviously Sammy Hippier and Jeremy Carragher and um, all the top players of, of that at time, and we beat them two one. And I, th- I thought, yeah, we've got we've got half a chance here. So. So yeah, that's a that's a memory of mine sticking uh, quite uh, early early doors. Number four, a few years on, was a, a two all draw um, against Chelsea uh, in November of two thousand and four. Um, it was a late equaliser by Rani Jaidi. We were two one down, uh, of course, and, and Jaidi scored very late on with a kind of like a, a swing of a right foot. Uh, the reason why I picked that game was not only was that game uh, a fixture that Chelsea conceded goals at Stamford Bridge, which for those who can remember back then, didn't happen very often. Um, yeah, I had a look. And so in that 4 5 season, obviously they won the league. They conceded 15 goals all season and only six at home all season. And we were the only team to score two at Stamford Bridge all year. So Yeah, and that doesn't really surprise me because I remember, think, I remember back then there was a... There, there was there was a hell of a side. I think obviously that um, Abramovich's money started sinking into the the club at the time, and and obviously they, they started kind of signing players who were going to go on to be, you know, legends for the club. Obviously they already had Terry and they already had Lampard, but they were signing top 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 footballers. Um, Damien Duffs and Robbins of this world and whatnot, who obviously went on to help them win the league. Like I say, uh, and, and they won the league. They won the league that year in two thousand and four. Uh, of course, at the Reebok, uh, but that fixture was in November of, of, of that season. Um, and I actually went to that game as a young lad, um, one of the first early away games for me on my own without my parents. Uh, went down to, to London to watch that game. Um, and this is why I've picked it, actually. Well, one of the reasons why. So for any Bolton fans who are listening to this who actually went to that game, there was a 
a really bad accident on the way into London, which contributed to a lot of Bolton fans missing the vast majority of that match. So we took it upon ourselves on the club official coach to actually get off the coach in the middle of London as, as young lads. We would have been 16, 17, something like that, running through the middle of London, trying to get to Stamford Bridge um, and, and, and actually made it to the Stamford Bridge when, when many Bolton fans didn't take that journey and, 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 of course, missed the whole game. And we got to the bridge with literally oh, 10, 15 minutes to spur, um, ran in. Luckily, the, the Chelsea stewards let us in and we were like, Obviously, saying we, we, you know, we've made such an effort to get into the into the ground. We let us in, and and obviously we were young lads, and, and they let us in, and, and and that was almost right on cue um, for JD scoring that equaliser, and we just saw that that only goal. Um, me and me and my brother and and, and, a, and a couple of friends who made that journey down there, um, and obviously, yeah, that was a, a late equaliser that got us a pretty valuable point in a in a good era. Um, back in 2004, so more of a personal memory of that mainly because of the the journey that we had to make into 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 central London on that day. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was another. I mean, looking back, <laughs> it wasn't too the, the accident or the incident on 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 the way into London wasn't too far away from Brentford's ground or their old ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I remember sitting on the on the coach going into London and obviously we didn't have iPhones or anything like that at the time. And I remember saying to my, my mate, whose stadium's that? It literally like a little shed on, on the end of the, <laughs> on the edge of the, on the edge of the motorway or the dual carriageway at the time. And of course it, it was Brentford's. Some guy chirped up behind and said, oh, it's Brentford's growing that. And I was thinking, oh God, I probably don't have to go and play stadiums like that. <laughs> Well, well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you the tables have turned. Yeah. The turned, as they say. So yeah, that that's another kind of true uh, true memory from from back then. So yeah, that that's a little story about about that fixture. Number three on my list, and I got stress. I've missed loads of stuff out here. I've got, I've got I've been very very lucky as a as a now thirty six year old to to reflect on on some of these wonderful memories that I've got supporting Bolton Wanderers Football Club from over the years. And it has yeah, been we had a little chat before, and uh, we were saying about um, we just recorded the episode of me and Ben, and saying oh, everything pales into insignificance compared to Colin's memories. He's been spoiled. Yeah, and listen, I'm, I'm under no illusions that I have. Um, I remember, you know, this isn't a game memory, but I, I remember standing in the, in the Reebok one one Saturday afternoon, and I was just kind of like stirring at the pitch. <laughs> And I, I, for those who don't know, I've sat in the same seat um, since the ground opened in the North Upper. Mm. So I've got so many memories of of incidents and, and and situations and matches from over the years. And I remember this moment specifically. I was stirring just at, at the pitch, and my dad came at the side of me and just tapped me and said, "Are you all right?" And I was just said, "Yeah, I'm fine." Yeah, and this would have been around 2004. This memory. This isn't a match memory, but bear in mind so you know I'm just sharing this with, with, with you all but my dad tapped me on the shoulder and, and said are you alright and I was like yeah yeah I'm fine yeah he said what, what's up and I said well obviously we're doing well and you know we, we're, we're flying aren't we and he was like yeah yeah we are Um and, and I said well we've got a chance and I was just thinking about the Champions League flag being wave in the middle of the in the middle of the pitch and how, how much of a how much of a how much of a chance and a possibility that might actually happen yeah and, I, and my dad just turned around and said listen if it happens, it happens. Fantastic. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. One thing is for certain: this won't last. So just mm. enjoy. Take it, yeah. And take it in. Enjoy. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the players that you're watching. Enjoy the experiences that you're having. European trips and away games to Arsenal and all the stuff that you kind of took for granted, really. Um, and he said, just enjoy it because it, it won't last. And and yeah, um, we're planning trips to crawling now, aren't we? So. He was absolutely yeah. right. Uh, so yeah, well, it's funny. It's not to the same, not to the same level, of course. But um, my dad's best mate is a City fan, and he's been a City fan for what forty? He's been going for yeah. forty years. Yeah, yeah and yeah. his lad, who's a couple of years younger than me, basically started Probably going different. about ten years ago, and has seen them win the league basically every year. Doesn't and know any different. Yeah. And he always, and his dad always goes, he doesn't know how good he's got it. He's, no, you no. know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, he appreciates it. Obviously, coming from. Um, the depths of League One, whatever, going yeah, straight up to where they are now. But when you're there and you've experienced it, or you don't, you don't yeah. sort of take it in as a young lad. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, and then that's I think that's what my dad was trying to do, really, to me. I would have been yeah. probably, I don't know, like I say, maybe 15, 14, 15, 16, possibly. I'm not sure. Yeah. I can't quite remember. But, yeah, he just wanted to make sure that I, I was trying to enjoy it and not kind of get too carried away, but just, yeah, yeah don't take it for granted, basically, which is yeah. what I did. Of course, of course I did. Um, sorry, yeah, that, complete digress. Um, no. yeah. Number three, I'm going to go with... Um, Cardiff 2001 when we got promoted against Preston in the playoff final which was then Division 1 or of course the Championship as it's known now Um, I mean what can I say I remember going down and obviously going with my mum and dad and travelling down in my dad's old Nissan I don't know what it were some Nissan that he had at the time and yeah, I still remember now with flags at the windows and, and all that type of stuff. And you obviously, you don't really have anything to compare it to. And we'd been to, obviously, playoff finals prior to that, but I was only a young kid, you know, against um, Watford and prior to them, all the games against, you know, Reading and all that type of stuff and playoff semifinals and all that. But that 2001, again, I was only a young lad and you don't really have anything to really reference in terms of, expectations are we going to do it and all that type of stuff none of that type of stuff goes down into your, into your head does it it's just enjoying the moment in it i guess and and that's what what we were all doing i remember we stayed in some kind of bnb which is literally literally right across the water at, at the millennium stadium um in cardiff and i think my mom and dad purposely picked it because there was literally a pub right underneath the bnb that we were staying in <laughs> um yeah and, and looking out and going to the game before um, sorry, go into the to the game and obviously beforehand with the scarves on and the flags and and all that, all the good stuff that you you know you do it them them kind of big events like we did against um, Oxford a few months back. But as a youngster, it just means more. Anyway, obviously yeah. we won comfortably three nil, didn't we? Um, Gareth Farrelly scoring very early on, or should I say, early on in the game? I think it would have been at half an hour gone. I think something like that um, from about twenty yards out into the bottom corner set the tone a little bit um, and, and then very, they didn't really get much of a, a, a foothold in the game at all Preston from from memory I, I remember we had a, a goalkeeper on loan from Bradford I think by the name of Matt Clark and all these memories that I'm going to share with you certainly sharing with you now might not have happened if it weren't for Matt Clark because he was a loan goalkeeper who came in because I think it was Yussi who was injured at the time people will either be agreeing with me or disagreeing with that but I'm pretty sure it was Yussi at the time who was injured yeah and, and Matt Clark came in as a might even been an emergency loan. Anyway, he played probably one of his best games for us in that final. He made a couple of really vital saves uh, with the chances that Preston had, which were like I said were quite limited. Um, I think John Mackham, I think, was one of them that he, he managed to save one of his efforts. Who obviously went on to play for City. For those who remember. Um, and yeah, obviously, then we went on and got a second one with with Michael Ricketts rounding the goalie right in front of where we were sat in that um, behind the goal. And then, of course, Ricky Gardner went on this amazing run and made it 3 0. And yeah, I remember after the game thinking to myself, God, we're going to be going to Anfield and and and, and Highbury and, yeah. and, you know, and and Old Trafford and just thinking of all these clubs who were going to come to, to our place and all the rest of it. And it was just like, yeah, let's do it type of thing. And yeah. We stuck. We stuck in, in in the Premier League for, for for what twelve, thirteen years after. Number two, my favorite top five moments would be the Everton game when we'd already qualified for Europe, actually. Uh, but it was a game that secured a pretty high finish. I think around two thousand and seven time, um, we won the game three two after Bruno and got he actually got sent off quite early on in the game. We won the game three two with ten men, and that was Fernando Hierro's last ever game uh, as a footballer um, and I, re- I remember that quite vividly not only the Euros last kind of game but the send off I think you might have seen the picture of Akocha and oh, Jufi and, and a few others were all all of them actually were all surrounding him and giving him, a, giving him a, a kind of a big huddle or hug or whatever it was at the time and the whole yeah. stadium on the knees including the Everton fans and you know you realise a, a player of that magnitude who literally is a for the kids who, who play FIFA or the older kids who still play FIFA or yeah. FC, he was literally an icon of the game and he, and he, and he is and he was and he, and he always will be and he was just sat thinking, yeah, this is uh, 
this is a pretty special moment. This so that that's a memory that that kind of sticks out quite vividly for me. Obviously, we won the game, and afterwards, obviously, more importantly, from a Bolton perspective, I guess all the memories of the uh, European celebrations and the other che- the, the the cheerleaders on the pitch qualified for Europe and big Sam were there with his uh, grandson and stuff, and yeah, pretty special times. Um, but yeah, that was Europa League. Unfortunately, wasn't Champions League, which I envisioned only a couple of months beforehand. But yeah, one can't complain. And number one, I think pretty much all Bolton fans of my age group will probably agree with this, and it has to be the result against Bayern at the Allianz Arena in November, I think it was, of 2007. Um, what can you say about that? I mean, I'll try and trim down my memories a little bit, but. I went, with, I went with my brother, um, and obviously we were on the air all day. I was, I would have been like just turned 18, 19, I think. So, you know, it's perfect, isn't it? Really, yeah. Drinking at 19, 18, 19 year old in Germany, we we did a few of the beer halls, which obviously a lot of Bolton fans were in and stuff. And I think we would have took about maybe four and a half thousand, I think, it, to, to buy, and I think it was. So they were a good contingent of us. That's when attendances didn't matter. It wouldn't matter if there were 500 Bolton fans there at the time, 200 yeah, or 500. Yeah. No, nobody would bother about that stuff back, you know, back then. But yeah, I think we took around 4,500. I do stand corrected with that, but they're in there. But anyway, the Bolton fans were spread all over all over Munich and we were in the beer halls and in the pubs and the bars and all that type of stuff. And me and my brother did a bit of pottering about and had a few drinks here, there and everywhere. We settled in one bar and um, we sat with a load of Bayern fans Lord of it. And obviously, I don't, for those who have been to Germany, Germans speak better English than a lot of Englishmen, to be honest. And we're obviously having full, full conversations with them and in terms of kind of what we expected from the game. And they knew all about us because at the time, obviously, we were in the Prem and they were actually saying to us that, you know, we we're looking forward to seeing some of your players like Jaskalainen yeah. and, and, and Anelka and, and Jufi and, uh, and obviously Kevin Davis and, and all the rest of them, they were they were pretty excited for the game, to be honest. I think obviously they they, they knew all about us and they probably wondered what they were like testing themselves against us because at the time it weren't the Bayern Munich that they are now. They were obviously in the Europa League and they'd gone through a little mm. bit of a transition, I think. They saw some top players like your Klosers and I think uh, Podolski, who scored against us that night, and Ribéry as well and Van Bommel and Doug Wrong, they have loads of good players. Uh, yeah. Lucio centre half and stuff like that. But but yeah. Um, anyway, the, we, long story short, we, we obviously didn't play any of them players. And I always reflect and think, I wonder what them they thought when they saw the team sheet and there were no suit Bolton superstars in in, in the team. Um, but obviously, we didn't have smartphones and we didn't have any way of getting that reaction from the people at the time. It was just like we got to the ground and that, there's your team type that of thing. Was it, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, obviously, none of them players, none of them players play, but we still got the result. But a bit of a memory, I guess, from that is I remember for those who haven't been to at the Alliance Arena, <clears throat> the, tra- the train station, train line in a very efficient manner that runs parallel with uh, the Alliance German efficiency. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember getting this train and it stopped literally right outside the Allianz and I, I, there would have been about maybe three or four hundred people behind me getting off this train and I just kind of like stepped off the train and just like stopped and didn't, and didn't walk and didn't, and just stared at this this stadium and just talking in this view yeah yeah and obviously I'd have yeah. been on a few scoops and I guess this moment just sobered me up all of a sudden and I just yeah. looked and just thought Oh, well, why the hell are we playing these lot? <laughs> um, and even now, I can still think back, and 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 I probably be able to pinpoint almost the exact spot where I, I stopped and had that like bit of a moment realization. Um, yeah. Realization, yeah, that, that obviously we we're pay, playing a club like like Bayern Munich, and not just playing them because we played top clubs every week, didn't we? Don't get me wrong; it wasn't that it's in in a competition like you know the Europa League. Um, it wasn't like a friendly or anything anything like that or a league match or yeah. whatever. It was a proper European competition. But but yeah, I, I, I have to put Bayern as, as number one. I, I could have picked lots of others. Obviously, I've, I've missed loads. I, um, you know, I've got Koch just keeping us up against Middlesbrough, JJ going on that mad run against West Ham and pinging that one in top corner against David James. I could go further back. But um, 
yeah, they're my they're my top five. Hopefully, obviously, when we beat Ori in the week as well, that's up there, isn't it? And, yeah, and so for, for the younger people listening, I, I, obviously, you've all got we've all got, should I say, really good memories of of, of Bolton in recent years, and it's not to tarnish any of their memories because they've all been fantastic. You know, your wins at yeah. late on Accrington and your your day the on goal against um, Shrewsbury and, and and whatever else, and and, the, and obviously the 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 um, playoff, no, the pizza. Should I say the pizza trophy against against Plymouth? Oh, they're all amazing memories, but you know the yeah. the pale into insignificance really when when you strip it all back and, and realize what, yeah. what 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 a lot of Bolton fans Where you've been. Have, yeah, have yeah. enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Hopefully, them them times will come back. Obviously, it's more and more difficult now with the, with the way the game is and the chances of that happening is obviously very not very slim, but less likely than it was before, shall we say? But fingers crossed that. That we get back. I am a strong believer in football goes in cycles, especially for clubs of our of our size. I know yeah. we have a we're cracking, same we're massive and all that. Let's not dispute we are a, a, a really big club, but we're not a, an elite club. We're not a, a massive football club. So them elite clubs always stay at the top, don't they? As we all know. But yeah, you know, I mean, when you see up. in the last the last sort of 15, 20 years, has been fifteen probably fifteen clubs of our size that have got into your, you know, like. Exactly. Like Fulham, Brighton, uh, exactly. West Ham a bit bigger, obviously Villa, and you know there's there's loads exactly. that have got into the yeah. I, I, put, that, so. put us in that kind of middle category with your likes of Leicester and yeah, South Leicester, and course, yeah. Leicester and Southampton and 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 clubs of that size, Wolves. Yeah, yeah. We all go through cycles. You know, you, you yeah. play lower leagues like Southampton. You know, labeling League One and Wolves were and Sheffield United were, and and then you go full circle again, don't you? That, I, I do believe that that will happen, but. But yeah, I'm very lucky that I've been able to enjoy all that as a, as a in my twenties and in my, yeah. in my teens and and even before then. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed my my memories. Yes, yeah, some some fabulous stories from uh, you know the better times being a Bond fan. Um, if you have some uh, more memories you think uh, Collins forgot over the last sort of yeah. twenty odd years, uh, get them down in the comments. And if you've got one from further from long ago, or if you've been a Bond fan for only ten years like me. And you've got some ones that uh, you feel are uh, better. Get them in the comments. And yeah, if there's you no. Enjoyed, you, there's, if you there's, like, sorry, um, I was going to say there's, there's no there's no right and wrong memory. I guess is there? It's all personal oh, yeah. preference, isn't it? Do you get what I mean? Like as I say, yeah, I put that on the pool and then a, you know that that's just my my own personal preference and whatever else. So yeah, put you put them in, put them in the chat. Yeah, get them and give us a like if you've enjoyed this new type of video. We're going to try and uh, get more of these out. We're going to do, you know, there's unlimited top fives we can do. If you've got some ideas for us to do, you want, things you want us to see, um, get them down in the comments as well. And if you have enjoyed, hit that subscribe. We have recently hit a thousand subscribers, so a massive thank you uh, to all you listeners. Yeah, we next milestones in sight. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> thank you for watching uh, we're going to be back with more of these type of videos so we'll see you soon come on you whites